The ideal gas equation is a tool to help us calculate the properties of gases. There are many applications of the ideal gas equation, and in this lesson, we'll use it to calculate the density of a gas, which helps explain part of the water cycle. We'll also incorporate the ideal gas equation into a stoichiometry problem. As we learned in lesson 1.5, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if we know the mass and volume of a gas, we can calculate its density. In fact, we can calculate the density of any ideal gas using the ideal gas law. I'll show you two methods for doing so. Method A is the most straightforward, and it's the method I prefer. First, I assume one mole of gas for simplicity. I can calculate the mass of one mole using the molar mass. Then I use the ideal gas law to calculate the volume of one mole of gas. Lastly, I divide the mass by the volume, and bingo, bango, we've got density. The second method involves using the ideal gas law to derive an equation that calculates density directly from pressure, temperature, and molar mass. First, we rearrange the ideal gas law to have moles of gas divided by volume of gas on the left side and pressure divided by R times temperature on the right. We know that mass divided by molar mass equals number of moles which we can substitute in for n in our rearranged ideal gas equation. If we shift molar mass to the right side, we are left on the left with m over v, which is the same as density. Time for a practice. Try to figure out which is more dense, dry air or humid air. To solve this, you'll want to pick your favorite method from the previous two, and calculate the density of water vapor. Then compare that to the density of dry air, which is 1.29 grams per liter. I'll put methods A and B on the screen, and you can pick your favorite. I'll start with method A, in which I assume one mole of water and calculate the mass and volume separately. The volume of one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure was calculated in our last lesson, and it's 22.4 liters. The mass of one mole of water is the same as its molar mass, 18 grams. Lastly, we'll divide 18 by 22.4, and we get 0 0.8 grams per liter. In method B, I would search deep in my memory banks for that equation we derived which I only use for questions such as this. The equation is that the gas's density equals molar mass times pressure divided by the ideal gas constant R and temperature. Now I just plug in my known values and get my answer. You can see that the density of water vapor, 0 0.8 grams per liter, is less than the density of dry air. Therefore, as water evaporates, it actually lowers the density of the air around it. Humid air's low density explains part of the water cycle, as air which passes over a body of water becomes more humid due to evaporation, and thus less dense, it starts to rise. Another reason air rises over bodies of water is from water's high heat capacity. Water can hold more heat than land, so air passing over warmer water heats up, which also decreases its density. We can also combine the gas laws with reaction stoichiometry. The ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, allows us to calculate moles from volume or volume from moles. This allows us to add volume of gas to the amounts row in the mole tunnel visualization. We use PV equals nRT to convert gas volume to gas moles. Time to practice. How many moles of gas are released when 100 grams of sodium metal are unwisely submerged in hydrochloric acid? Here's the solution. First, we will convert grams of sodium into moles of hydrogen using our well-practiced pattern, molar mass and then mole ratio. Here's where things get different though. We'll plug moles of hydrogen into a PV equals NRT equation and solve for the volume, which is 48.6 liters in this problem. 